No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Color Grading Central, professional color grading with Color Finale. Shutterstock, where ideas take shape. Black Magic Design, amazing solutions for film, post-production and television. Big Stock, videos and images for everyone. Hey everybody, we're here with Matt from Panasonic and he's here to talk about the new anamorphic update for the GH4. Yeah, so um, we're actually, we formally press released a new mode called our anamorphic function in the GH4. And what that does for shooters is it's going to give you a 4x3 aspect ratio capturing function. But unlike some companies where it would limit you to a 2160 height because your 16x9 4K image is only 2160 tall, we're actually capturing at 2496 tall by 3328 wide. So it's got more verticality to its capture. This means that when I add a 2x anamorphic lens, I'm gonna first off give you a 266 to one aspect ratio, which is very old school uh, anamorphic look, very old school cinema, um, cinemascope. But we're also gonna be able to then give you some of the benefits of that too, by giving you more resolution, having a larger sensor, which gives you slightly shallower depth of field. Um, in addition to that, the reason we did this is that uh, we had come up with a mode called our 4K photo mode, which was designed for photographers to be able to quickly grab frames. And a lot of people were saying, this is a great mode for us to capture an anamorphic, but the problem is your frame rate's off. It's, 23, it's a 29.97 frame rate. So what we ended up doing is we set up a dedicated anamorphic mode in the menu, and it's only four by three because that's the typical res resolution we would, or shape we would use for this. And then it gives you access to any of the frame rates in the camera. So 30 frame, 24, 23, 9, 7, 6. You have access to all of those things. Um, in addition, we're not press releasing it, but we are demonstrating uh, an example of uh, V-Log L, which is a logarithmic gamma in the camera. We don't know officially when we're going to announce it, but we are demonstrating it now. It's supposed to give us two stops more dynamic range out of the GH4. So when we combine that with the anamorphic function, you have a lot to work with in post. Is that your first uh, attempt into the log world for, the, for these cameras? Yes, I would say so. And frankly, without the work we've done with the Vericam 35, I don't believe this would ever come to fruition. Um, there's no way we would be working on something like this at a $1,700 price point if we weren't working for it for the cinema space. So we owe a lot of ben we, we owe a lot of thanks to our broadcast division for, for the work they've put into the Vericam and, and what making what an excellent product it is. A um, couple of other notes on the anamorphic, which I forgot to mention. Uh, it will record internally, obviously, in the SD card and gives you the 3328 wide by uh, 2496 height. Um, when you do that, the HDMI output will be dead. You won't have an HDMI out. So if you put the camera into 10-bit mode, what it will do is it will no longer record internally, but it will output a 2880 wide by 2160 tall uh, 4 by 3 image to your monitor in 10 bit 422. Now remember, it's still using technically the 23, 2496 by 3328 resolution of the sensor. It's just now scaling it slightly so that we can fit it within the 16 by 9 HDMI output. Okay, nice. Yeah, I feel like I've seen a lot of. Uh, GH4 users, I mean, even from GH, you know, older GH uh, models, trying to do anamorphic and feeling like it's a good camera to do it with. So I feel like it's an interesting thing you guys are coming out with this now. Um, well, four thirds means four by three, so it would only make sense that we would probably start to venture into this space. Totally. And and uh, you, you mentioned you're using the Vedra primes here. Uh, so we have some Vader primes in in stock or uh, in the in the booth right now. We're also showing right now in booth. Um, they've announced an intention to produce a 2x anamorphic lens that will mount on a micro four thirds mount, uh, and it'll be auto focus, a uh, manual focus, but it'll have only one focus pull that you have to do versus some of the mounts that and adapters you have to use where there's two different le focuses that you have to do. So this, the point of this is that they're they're intending to hit about a five thousand dollar or less price point on a lens like that. Well, some of you probably had a heart attack when you heard 5,000 because that's kind of expensive. What, when we're talking anamorphic, that's like, that's like Yugo price points. I mean, we're talking extraordinarily affordable for anamorphic. So the goal here is to make anamorphic, uh, you know, we're trying to democratize it for the masses, make it available for everybody. Hell yeah. Well, I think uh, we can all be into that. Right on, dude. Thanks, Matt. Uh, I think that's it.